Hello. After grading program number two, I thought it might be helpful to record a short video with some of comments. My first comment is make sure to test your program. Testing is a very important part of programming. Uh, that's the step where you make sure that your program gives the correct answers. It's a very complicated process. In this course, I've done most of the work for you. That's because for each of the assignments, I tell you what test cases I'm going to use and what the correct answers are. So for each of the assignments, there's a matching rubric for example, for Param 2, which we just completed, you can see that the test cases here that I'm going to use, test number 1, test number 2, and test number 3, and so on. So, for example, before you turned in your assignment, at some time you should have tried inputting $550,000 and then making sure that your program gave the correct result of $23,250. All right, well, what are some of the uh, more minor issues that I saw with the uh, program? Uh, and the first is that I would like to encourage a more use of constants. And so you've got these values, you know, scattered throughout your uh, program. This is going to make it hard, though, if we want to make any changes to the program in the future. You know, let's say the tax brackets change, and all of a sudden, instead of the range of 4 to 6, you're looking 4 to 7. Um, and instead of 7 through 9, you're looking 8 through 9. So, oh, well, we need to change the 6s to 7s. And so you go through and you change the sixes to sevens. Maybe you do search and replace. And now you need to change the um, sevens uh, to eights, but not all of the sevens. So now you can't use search and replace. And if it gets kind of confusing, all of these numbers flowing around, then that's when you say, oh, maybe I just need a constant. The next thing I noticed is that in this program about tax rates and tax brackets, um, some people simplified the calculations by pre-calculating you know, the uh, amounts for certain tax brackets. For example, you might calculate, oh, this bracket added $500, and if you pass this tax bracket, that added $750, and so on. And then put those uh, numbers literally into the program. Well, it's a good idea to do pre-calculation, but the problem with using a literal value like that is that if someone comes back and changes any of those parameters, it doesn't change your uh, pre-written value. And to make it even harder, they can't just do a search and replace. Someone would have to reverse engineer how you got to that number and then re recalculate it and then replace it. And so that turns out to be a really bad or confusing or dangerous way of doing it. And so instead, you might do something like put in a calculation, rate 1 times tax 1, or you know whatever the names of the values you're using. And if you're going to do that again uh, many times, then you could even assign this to a constant. And so have a constant that represents these um, values that you're adding in there. And that would be a preferable way to do the calculation. OK, the next thing I noticed was some structural um, issues with control structures. So people are using if and um, else commands. And the, probably the two things that I noticed most was that there tended to be too many things in the if and else commands. So let me give you here an example. So if something is true, we'll do step A, whatever step A is, and then we'll do step C. Otherwise, we'll do step B, and then do step, step C. Well, we want to minimize the amount of code that's in the um, control structures. So if regardless of whether this is true or false, you always do C, C shouldn't be in here at all. C should be here afterwards. So you can do either A or B, and then afterwards you always do C. One place where I noticed this was in the tax program, people would do the calculation and then print the result. Otherwise, you do a different calculation, print the result, and so on. And so uh, it's much less awkward if you just do the calculation and then afterwards just print the result. Now, depending on what you're repeating, you might need to move code out and put it in front. In this case, code here that I would take out and put after. Another thing I noticed about the uh, control structures is that some folks nested way too many. So each level of nesting, when something is inside of something else, basically increases the complexity of your code. And so you would like to minimize that. So if you find that you have you know, your opening braces kind of is shooting off because you have more and more and more levels, that starts to get really confusing. And when they start closing, it's even more confusing if you have code in here to kind of keep track of logically which things are mi mixing, uh, matching with, with what and so on. The whole thing gets kind of confusing. And so if you find yourself, sh your code shooting off this way, 
think about, is there a way that I can kind of flatten that structure logically so that I don't have uh, uh, so many levels of, of indentation? All right, one last thing I noticed was um, some use of off by one constants. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you have a constant in your program that's representing some value, there should only be one number in the program that represents that. For example, let's say we're looping through uh, a string or an array or vector or some kind of container, uh, some of which we've talked about already and some of which are coming up. And let's say at some point in the program, you check to see if something is less than or equal to 10 to see if you're in bounds of that container. So here the idea is 10 then is somehow matching the size of this container and we're using 10 to kind of measure that size. Then throughout the program we should always use 10, 10, 10, 10, of course, or a constant to um, refer to that size. And that in another part of the program we shouldn't check to see if it's less than 11. Now, less than or equal to 10 and less than 11 will work out to be the same thing in your program. It's just that now, sometimes we use the number 10 to refer to this value and sometimes 11. And so that's going to make a program harder to read, more confusing, uh, harder to debug, and certainly harder to modify. All right, well, hopefully you'll find th these comments useful. And as always, if you've got any questions, uh, please post. Okay, see you online.